Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we're gonna be doing a training pack on Hoops Saves. So this is technically a guided walkthrough through my saves training pack for Hoops, but I'm gonna layer in a bunch of tips and tricks into this video because I made them with those in mind. Now this was by far one of the most requested training packs in my Twitch live stream was a saves pack for Hoops. I encourage you guys to follow along as I do this. So bam, there's the code. It's also down below in the description. And I've held off doing it for a while because historically, the training pack videos don't do very well on YouTube, which sucks so bad. So if you guys enjoy this kind of content and want more like tips and tricks videos, let me know down below in the comments, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. All those analytics tell me that you guys are enjoying these types of videos. So I'll do more of them if you guys like it. All right, so the first one's not too hard. I'm about to miss this, aren't I? So whenever I make training packs, I encourage you guys to think about them as in-game scenarios because I don't think you really learn anything unless you're able to apply what you're training into a game. So like right here, you're rotating back from an offensive possession and your teammate is coming up to make a 50, but obviously he's going to get devastated. So you have to get really good at reading these like corner backboard reads and that is actually a pretty bad example uh there, there are different tiers of saves you need to hold yourself to so like that one is like the bottom of the barrel save because you weren't able to immediately follow it up and it probably would give your opponents another shot opportunity because simply because of how slow it was so i'm gonna do that one again and show you guys kind of like the types of saves you're gonna be wanting to try to get like right there i had an opportunity to maybe follow it up and get it back downfield uh and the second shot is basically just the mirror image of the last one and and right there, that was a perfect save right through and through. You could follow that up all the way through the corner. I really wish on these saves packs, it would give you just like a couple seconds to go and make the save, but it doesn't. And so it, it doesn't teach follow through, which is very important to be thinking of mindset wise. Um, So this one, I think is just like a, yeah, this is another little, that's a pretty simple save, but a lot of people get panicked on defense and sometimes they'll just rush through here with all the boosts when it's better to take it slow. Okay, so I don't know why this shot is going right from the get-go, but this is basically the mirror image. Simple push it to the corner. That wasn't the best follow through. So all your saves, you want to be like controlling it through or getting it back to a pass for your teammate and not the opponent. So like this, this was, I tried to actually soft touch this to the corner. That wouldn't be bad if my teammate was rotating back. They could probably go follow that. And this is the reverse of that. See, what you probably want to do is push it back down here to make it awkward for the opponents to be able to take a shot because there's no actionable play after this. Like, there's no way they're going to be able to take a shot on that from where I put it. This is obviously you're just caught out of position, and this is probably one of the first tough saves. Yeah, you have to, like, really... Oh, my gosh. So you just need to realize you, you've got more time than you think you do. And so right there, just calm and control. That's actually an example of a pretty bad save there. Let's see if I can do a better one. I think we can get this. Yeah, this is a little bit better. I could follow that through, maybe pinch it back downfield. And that's the mindset you always want to be leading with when you're doing these kind of training packs. Oh gosh. All right, so this one, perfect in-game scenario. You're at midfield expecting your teammate to dominate or set you up with a pass so you can finish the goal. But they do something dumb. They get devastated on a 50 and it goes right to your own net. Um, that's how I do those. I would probably recommend staying in ball cam. Let's see if I can do it in ball cam. Oh gosh, that's such a hard read. But yeah, right there. A very tough read to get used to. So if this one takes you a while, just quick little power slide here. Easy double jump. Also, if you guys don't know how to fast aerial yet, I would highly recommend watching my fast aerial tutorial because it's pretty essential in hoops because getting above your opponents means everything. Oh, that I just auto went. That's cool. Easy save. And look. Went a little low. That would be a tough follow through, but I was able to. This is just the reverse of the last shot, but you get these a lot in high level hoops. At a certain point, the further up midfield you can play, you know, the, the better chance you have of making a goal on offense. You can overextend yourself a lot. So being able to make these saves will help you on offense as well, because it'll allow you to play a little bit more risky. Oh my gosh, this shot right here. I hope you guys can figure out what this is. This is a kickoff gone wrong, also known as the SSL kickoff. If you guys watch my Twitch live streams, I have top 100 players that consistently give me the worst kickoffs and hoops I've ever seen. And so this is to practice it. Yeah, easy save, just get to the corner. Man, I made that look easy. This is tough. This is a tough save, especially in game. These become really difficult. Soft touch. Ooh, a little harder than I would have liked. So always be thinking where the ball is going to go after your touch. Like, obviously, in the SSL kickoffs, that's kind of tough. 
Oh, but like that, that was so terrible. Right there, you're absolutely getting dunked on in high level hoops. These kind of saves just don't cut it after a while. You have to hold yourself to a higher standard. What's this one? Oh my gosh, you get these all the time. So um, in game scenario, so you're waiting here because you know how basic defense works. You wait on back post. Your teammate has the possession, but they just get dominated on a 50 right here. This scenario is so common. This positioning is prime because if they win this 50, you could go upfield and follow it up. But obviously they lose, but you're in the right position for it. So you just have to make the save. Oh my gosh, I barely made that save. Let's do better on the reverse, huh? Let's go over here. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's beautiful. So these next couple shots are gonna help you distinguish basically the height of the rim. Because a lot of times when you see people first doing hoops, they'll just yeet themselves right into the rim on saves. And so these next like four or five shots, they'll help differentiate when to save from under the net and when to save from over the net. So like this one's probably just like a over the net save. Not my best. If you tell by my positioning, whenever I make these training packs, I'm always making them so where you're rotating through boost. Because this is positioning you'll actually run into in these scenarios. And so right here, just take this, follow through. And you can serve a little bit more boost that way. Yeah, so I usually just advocate going to backboard, pushing this to your own corner, and then you'll be able to follow it through without there being a threat on your net. All right, so this next one is kind of where it gets tricky. And if you see the way I do this, uh, I've got my controller overlay on screen, so you should be able to see. So I come up, I tilt, then I use my second jump a little bit later. So basically I get the car ready to make the save and then I use the second jump to like finish it. I don't know why I do that. It's not necessary. Let me see. Can I do it without doing that? Yeah, cause sometimes I'm holding on to the flip to the last possible second because you don't know. It, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. Like if you're, if you're a little far out, you can flip cancel forward more. And so it's just like delaying that second jump usage or maybe a flip usage. Uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So this shot right here, this is probably the reason I made this training pack. You're rotating back from a failed offensive possession and your teammate came up and double committed, which happens all the time. And you've got to make the most miraculous save of your life. And that's kind of what this is. Oh gosh, please. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I got that. First try. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can do the reverse. And so, yeah, you've got a little bit more time than you think you do. If you are able to consistently save these, you're going to find yourself ranking up a lot, especially because your teammate's going to double commit on the dumbest times. So if you can just get used to coming in here and making these saves like they're no big deal and making them to where you can follow them up before your opponents can, you're set. If you want to see me make more training pack videos like this one or just like hoops tips in general, let me know down below in the comments. And if you guys haven't done it yet, make sure you try out my ground air dribble hoops training pack. It is a pretty stellar offensive pack and it helped me get really consistent with like some of the most essential shots in hoops and i'll see you guys next time